We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey. And share their families' experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Kibirichia in Meru County. We want to show that there is always room for improvement. And that a farmer who is educated is always successful. So let's shape up! We are here to meet Nicholas. His mother is happy to have him manage her big shamba with help from some of the family members. Nicholas, have you always been a farmer? Oh well, no, I've been working in town for uh, around seven to five years. Mm, how was it working in town? I can't say really it's a reliable job. I've been actually hustling. Hustling in town? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what made you come back to the shamba? I realized my potential. Maybe being in the farm could be a better life than uh, being in town. Mm, that's mm. nice. So what would you like Shamba Shepherd to do for you? I've been looking forward for a partner who can give me better information, better technology, and link me with other companies that are interested in the farm. So you want to make money? I want to be a millionaire. Ah, <laughs> great. <laughs> that's wonderful, that's wonderful. I know Shamba Shepherd is here. Yeah. And we'll work with you and see what you can do to make sure that you are shaped up. They have cows, vegetables, napier, and potatoes. Nicholas has spent a lot of time and effort investing in his potato crop. He has been trying a new way of growing potatoes from Lackland called the Viazi Power. Viazi Power uses a mixture of fertilizers which increase the number, size, and quality of potatoes per plant. The first treatment is done at planting, where potato seeds are soaked in a planting mixture and planted with improved fertilizers. There are three more treatments to do, and we have an expert from Lackland to tell us more about the second stage. Nicholas, we are very impressed that you want to make potatoes into a good, good business, and we are here to help you. So, Nicholas, uh, I'd like to know, how have you been getting on with Viazi Power? This is my first time I'm trying my best. I want to see for one, but I uh, achieve what my goals. Oh, you're trying your level best? Yeah. Ah, oh, very nice. Now, Simon, tell us, at what particular stage are Nicholas potatoes right now? Uh, the potatoes now are the vegetative stage, which in Viazi Power we are drumming as uh, the 10 leaf stage, where we can start doing the 10 leaf foliar applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is 10 leaf stage? It's the point where uh, the potatoes have achieved uh, 10 foliages where they have the right sizes in terms of the surface area and uh, the stage where we can be able to apply the foliar for effective utilization. Mm -hmm. So what does a farmer do first? The first thing that a farmer does in the 10 leaf stage is uh, mixing the chemicals that are in the 10 leaf stage which is basically a combination of uh, nitrogen based uh, foliars uh, together with the uh, phosphorus based foliars and also some boosters of growth so that uh, the potatoes can actually continue growing from the 10 leaf stage, now the vegetative stage, to now the flowering stages. Ah, yeah. so the farmers mix the chemicals? Yeah, they mix the chemicals in what we call the product mix tank, uh, where you take uh, each chemical in the recommended rate, you mix them in 20 liters of water, and then you can start applying them on your farm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think the best thing to do now, right now is to demonstrate to the farmer how to apply the chemicals. Yeah, you can surely do that. The 10 leaf stage is a foliar spray of a mixture of feeds, which come together in a box for each stage of the treatment. Make sure you wear protective gear when handling chemicals and always read the instructions. Each pack from Lackland will have everything you need to spray half an acre of the 10 leaf stage. Enrich, Multi N, NHK, Vitazine, Amcopest, 
and maxi boost. Mix well and carefully pour into a knapsack. Everything you need comes in one box. When spraying, wear dust coats, gloves, masks, and goggles. Evenly spray the whole crop. Two weeks after spraying, repeat the spray to give the potatoes the boost they need. The next stage of the Viazi power method will be to spray a third and fourth foliar when the crop flowers in order to get a bumper crop. Farmers have been getting 50 to 60 bags in half an acre using this method. Using the Viazi power method, you can increase your potato yields by as much as double and the potatoes will be of good quality and size. Coming up next, I have a good friend from Shamba Shepa, John from Coopers, to give Nicholas some advice on his cows and one in particular. John, Nicholas here has many cows. Uh -huh. And Marula here is in Kafi. Wow, Nicholas, congratulations in advance. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it seems a good to have you soon, yeah? yeah. And another new calf, huh? So, how do you clean up this place? Because I found the place is not so much clean and that can become an issue. Actually, I clean once in a day. So, one thing is that the place where they mostly for the in calf cows, like these ones, like Marula, is always good to clean and clean well. Why? Because one, prevent diseases, prevent infections, and also keep away bacteria. And it's always good to clean very early in the morning and late in the evening, rather than do it in the midday. Because when you do it in the morning, you have cleaned up all the infections and all the bacteria that could have been there in the course of the overnight. Eh? overnight. And then in the evening, everything that could have come from the farm and has come to the shed is good to clean up in the evening such that your cows will not have the cases of being infected. Mostly for Marula, who is already in calf, it's always good to keep it in the best place, the cleanest, because one, you are going to prevent what you call subclinical mastitis. Subclinical mastitis will not be visible now when it's already in calf. But the moment the cow is going to calf down, that's when you're going to find the cases of mastitis, thinking that it got infected at that time when it has just calved down. Unfortunately, it got infected when it was already in calf. And no mastitis gets into the animal's system, not from the animal's body to the udder or to the teeth, but it passes from the outside through the teeth canal into the system of the udder. And that's where you get a lot of loss when your cow is going to calve down. So it's always good to clean up the place and disinfect it because some of the bacteria and the microorganisms can be very much visible and with your own water, you can't clean up everything. So it's always good you clean and you disinfect the place and it's always good that for disinfection, you do it after seven days, after seven days. So you just clean in the morning, in the evening, but on the seventh day, you disinfect because the cooper's eye disinfectant is going to last for a long time of seven days and then after that, your cows will be safe from now even to the time you the cow is going to calve down. Yeah. Yeah. So I think now you can help Nicholas to clean up the place and disinfect the place. Okay, I'm ready. Let's do it then. Make sure you sweep and wash the area twice every day and keep the floor clean and dry to stop diseases from spreading. Then remember to disinfect the area once every week. Mix 25 milliliters of cooperside in 10 liters of water and use mixture to wash the shed. Cooperside is a disinfectant and is good for keeping cow sheds clean. You can also use it to clean chicken houses. So John, we've washed and disinfected the area. Yeah. Uh, do you have any more advice you'd like to give Nicholas on the feed? So Mr. Nicholas, how do you prepare this? Well, it's very simple. I get my nappy, nappy glass from the farm, uh -huh. uh, oat straws from the farm, and the wheat straws from the store. Uh -huh. Then use the sharp cutter. Uh -huh. After that, I feed the animal directly. Directly? Yeah. So, Nicholas, when I look upon your feed, is that you get nappy glass directly from the shamba. It's recommendable every time you get the green matter from your shamba, could be nappy glass or freshly cut from the shamba, is advisable. Every time you put it somewhere for an overnight under the shade, it dries up at least to lower the amount of water content in it such that you can have a maximum dry matter intake in the animal's body when you're going to feed on it. Secondly, Nicholas, the mixture between your succulent or your fresh feed against your dry feed, which is your wheat straw, 
she is recommendable to be 50 percent 50 percent i can see this one is around 75 percent and only some few wheat stores eh? so it's recommendable the uh, fresh cut or the succulent feed from the shamba you mix it in terms of 50 50 percent and that will be good because they're going to have maximum intake of dry matter in the animal's body the moment it feeds on that feed <coughs> Nicholas needs to wilt his fodder before giving it to the animals and mix the right amount of dry feed. But it's not just the right feed that makes a difference. John tells Nicholas a cow in calf should have supplements. Maclick Plus helps calves to grow strong bones and helps the mother to give lots of milk and calf down easily. Kupakula Advanced Formula is a protein supplement which helps the calf grow a strong body, helps the mother to stay healthy and strong, and increases the amount of milk. Using this supplement will mean that the calf will be strong, healthy, and have a good milk supply to help it grow. The cow will also be able to continue producing milk after giving birth, and you won't have problems with milk fever. Nicholas now knows how to manage his cow in calf and prepares to feed her well along with the supplements from Coopers, which he starts giving the cows right away after reading the instructions on the packet. Coming up, after a soil test, Nicholas gets expert advice on top dressing and learns how he can manage his business records to get better profits. To receive all Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just a leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are still here in Meru County where Nicholas is expecting a bumper harvest of his potatoes. And we've also made sure that his cow is happy, healthy and ready to calf down. But there's still lots to be done, so let's go! Healthy yields don't just happen by accident on a shamba. You need to look after the soil for better results and this is where a soil test can be vital to the success of any shamba. Soil cares have a mobile testing truck that visits towns and centers all over the country. A soil sample is taken and can be analyzed in just a few hours. Having a soil test will tell you exactly what to put in your soil and what crops you can grow. Paul from Mare Fertilizer is here to give us some advice. First of all, tell us how important is a soil test? Mr. Nicholas, have you ever done a soil test? Not really before. I've just have had one. So, this soil test will be the first soil test he has ever done. But Nicholas, once you do your soil test, you actually get the actual amount of nutrients that are in the soil, such that you use the correct amount of fertilizer for your crop. That is, you not have gone any loss. What do you mean? Because I've been using fertilizers before. You've been using fertilizers before, but you have not been having the actual reason as to why you use that fertilizer. So whenever you do your soil testing, you surely know the exact fertilizer that is required for your plant. Mm -hmm. So that and is why it's important. It's very, very important. Mm -hmm. And secondary, so you'll know the quantity or the, the amount of that fertilizer that he'll be, he'll be using for that plant. Aha! So you have the results now? We'd like to know what they are. Uh, we have the results here from Soil Care. And uh, to start with, Mr. Nicholas, your soil is uh, quite acidic. Uh, and perhaps we need to know which type of fertilizer we have been using before. Well, actually before, uh, when, I, when, I, when I was in school, I was trained to be using DAP for planting. Mm -hmm. And then probably top it see here. Okay. That is, uh, for the mis case, you top at the knee height. Yeah. So that's the way I've been working all the way around. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what you need to know, even though you are taught in school, uh, it's not bad to use DAP, but uh, you need to use DAP whenever you have a, a supporting document, like what Soil Care has given us. That is the soil results after the analysis. Because uh, some fertilizers do acidify the soil. Once the soils are acidic, usually have some uh, problem with the availability of some uh, elements, like phosphorus. In your case here, we can see your pH is quite low, which is 4.9. 
and that is why we can attribute that to more of using that DAP because if you've been using the DAP since uh, you were taught in school, it can be some time back. Mm -hmm. So you have used a lot of DAP in your shamba. Right. Yeah. If I can further look at your, your results, I can see your nitrogen is quite low. So even though you are told that you can be able to, to top dress your shamba at once for your maize at knee high, we should recommend you do what we call spray tart of dressing. That is, you apply your CAN twice in a season for that crop. For the first one, you do when the crop is knee high, and the second one, you apply it when, uh, when the crop is flowering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For his case here, you can see phosphorus is okay and uh, potassium is okay. So he, he'll only have to address the issue of the nitrogen. Right. You sort that out with the uh, top dressing. Mm, okay. Yeah. So you, you think this will be, we need top dressing, what we are seeing? Yeah, if you can look at the chamber, how it looks like, uh, you can see there is some um, yellowing. All right. Yeah, of the maize in some parts. Right. That is a manifestation of the deficiency of nitrogen. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, with what we have come with, uh, with it for Nicholas, we'll have sorted out uh, his problem. So you have something for us? Yeah, it's a CAN which will give us a 27% nitrogen. We'll have already sorted out the raw levels of nitrogen. So Mr. Karaoke, you have already explained to me that I should uh, apply the C head twice. So how do I go about it and uh, what units do I use? Okay, ordinarily, uh, we usually recommend 10 grams per plant. But now we want you to apply it twice. So we, we want you to apply 5 grams at knee height and 5 grams at flowering stage. Nicholas needs CAN fertilizer to top dress his maize. He should thin and weed his maize first so the crop can use all the fertilizer he applies. Sprinkle 5 grams or 1 teaspoon of CAN around the base of each plant or down the center of each row. Top dressing should be done twice in a season. Once when the maize is at knee height and once when the crop is tussling. When you know the correct fertilizer to use on your soil and you apply it correctly, you will get a better profit from a bigger and healthier crop. So, paying for your soil test and a good fertilizer is a profitable thing to do. With the help from our experts, we are making sure Nicholas will have a successful business. But not all the work for success is in the field or the cow shed. Steven is not only enough for a farmer to get technical advice and improve on his farming methods to become a good, good farmer, but it's also very important for a farmer to do some record keeping. Is that so? Yes. Why is that? It's so because uh, for a farmer to succeed in any business, any farming, he need to have records. The record which shows the way he is progressing in his business, and the record will be able to tell him whether he is moving forward or he is going backward. Mm. Yes. Nicholas, do you keep any record in your business? I keep the small record that I'm able to maybe differentiate if I made a loss or a profit. Mm. If it could get me to run better. What are some of the keep. things you put in the record? Farm operation that is from uh, plowing, uh, harrowing, uh, seeds fertilizers and chemicals and uh, handling mm -hmm. uh, before harvesting and maybe handling in harvesting and the sales. Oh, wonderful. For you to succeed in each and every business, it's important to have a cash book. A cash book is where you record all what comes in and what goes out of the business so that you'll be able to track all the activities in and out of the business. Mm -hmm. If you manage with your head, then definitely some of the activities will get lost on, your, on, on the way and you'll be not be able to know how you spend in your business, how you invested and how to go about it. I also need to ask you another question whether uh, how you use your savings. Actually it's a family business. Uh, after the, uh, seeing the profit that you make, we share. Mm -hmm. So each of us make his own investment in his own way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Savings is very important, which will plow it back to your business and it will be able to make your business improve. There are so many channels of savings. You can save through the bank, you can open a bank account, you can save through circles, savings and a credit cooperative society. 
where you have a group of members and then you deposit your money there after you get it from your farm, you transfer it to there. The money will help you when you are you, you want to borrow a loan in a circle or in a bank and you'll be able to borrow uh, good money from there and come invest. So savings is very important when you are doing your farming. Savings will help you in times of emergencies. It also helps you in times of investment when you want to invest. When you want to take your children to school is very important for you to save in advance because if you do, don't do savings, what happens you'll find you do your farming and you'll be using the money from the farming and you pay the school fees and sometimes you contradict between business and the other activities. So it's very important. And for you to succeed with that, you need a record where you'll put some columns, where you can put how many cows you have, how many goats you have, how many chicken you have, and how many your sales of goat, your sales in chicken, and you put that record so that you are able to track down all the activities and what you do at the end of the day. So if you have many activities, then you have in one uh, single, simple uh, record book, you record all the activities in different columns and you'll be able to monitor each and every activity and what you are doing at the end of the day. Good, good. Any question, Nicholas? So I've got maybe two questions or three. First one is uh, on the column that you've told us. You define the page and then put the sheep, the cows and the numbers. Is it not very important because the operations of the dairy units are very many? Mm -hmm. Maybe if you separate mm -hmm. for the sheep and the farms, or you can as well put them together. That's my question. In your record book, keep each enterprise separately. Record the costs for each enterprise separately. For example, record the dairy activities together, like how much you spend on Market Plus and how much you get in sales, like milk, together so you'll know which enterprise is profitable and which one needs more work. At the end of the day, you are able to know whether you are making income or you are making losses. So by the end of the month, you are able to know which business gives me more income than the other. My second question is, you have told me explain through savings you can be able to acquire some loans. And I've tried it. I've gone to some circles, I've gone to some banks, but they still ask for security. So how can you advise me? Savings in SACO act as a collateral where you can borrow your money and also they use the savings as their collateral and you'll be able to pay back every month. So it's a good channel. In the banks they'll ask you also for the security but uh, if you do your business well and you have good records you will use that record and it will help all the bank manager or any other person who comes to your business to analyze and he will be able to tell you whether you will succeed or he will give you the loan. And uh, the most important thing is to have a good record where if you save in a bank, you are able to demonstrate your cash flow the way it's flowing. And uh, I believe if you do that, any bank, any circle will be able to give you finance to start your business. We know Nicholas has learned so much to make the Shamba into a better business. He can use the records he makes to get loans from the bank to improve the farm and make more money. And most importantly, his mother is very happy that his management will improve. Good luck, Nicholas. Where do you get answers from? Within us, from the radio, yes. from your experts, what was this? Now, do you know actually you can get that information on your phone? Maybe with your crops, maybe with your cows, your cows, your you pigs. Want, yes, you mm -hmm. want to get weather updates on the markets. All this information is on the end of your phone. I Shamba will send you the information you want, when you want it, for your Shamba. And you can call them to speak to an expert to help with the difficult problems. All you need to do is send JOIN to 21606. And someone will call you back to tell you more. There is an expert at the end of your line. That's very good for okay. me. <laughs> Shamba Shepherd is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode and click play.
You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shepherd, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shepherd, or simply text 30606.